Hello, this movie is going to be about using Adobe Muse to create a website. Alright, let's go ahead and open up the application. So I'm going to my Applications folder, finding Adobe Muse, and getting it started. Now, one of the things in using really anything with multimedia is trying to keep all of your assets, all the things that are being used in your project in one location. So my recommendation is before even starting Adobe Muse that you would create a folder and name that whatever. For this I'm just going to call it demo. And in there put any of your content. So if you're going to have any uh, other files like a picture, so let's say this JPEG for instance, keep everything together. Adobe Muse can work with different files being in different locations and if they are in different locations it can go ahead and gather all those things up and put it in one location but as a good practice a good way to work is to keep everything together that way when you go to backup files when you go to move things you can be certain that you're getting a hold of everything so I've created this folder put in the picture that I'm going to be using later so I've opened up Adobe Muse and it comes up with this window and obviously I've done some other projects here and showing some of those but we're going to go ahead and create a new Adobe Muse website and so we get some settings here and there's an advanced setting uh, twirl or turn down that we get some additional settings so we want to keep the fluid width one of the more current things in web design is creating a single website that adapts itself to different devices that are using it. And those different devices are going to have different screen sizes. So not a single design will work well on all devices. So fluid width will allow your piece to adapt or to adjust. Now you have to design it as well so that those changes are occurring when you want them to occur, but fluid width will help this occur. Now there are some things for maximum page width and, and that sort of certainly depends upon different devices but it's not real critical at this point I'm gonna keep mine at a thousand so have a nice even round number columns you could do your entire website without using any columns or one column I'm gonna put in 20 columns this is going to be useful for helping to design the piece primarily for when it's time to make it responsive, responsive to the different devices that are viewing it. So I'm going to leave it at 20 columns and then use a gutter of 20. That's the space that's in between each of the gutters. Minimum width we'll leave alone. Minimum height we'll leave alone as well. Margins, we're going to go ahead and change this to zero for now. And we can actually change any of these properties once we get in and get started with the project if we changed our mind. But for now that's going to work well for what we're going to do and leave the sticky footer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. So when we go in then into this project, you're gonna see that we are initially in the plan view. In the plan view, we'll see all of our individual pages and any of our master or masters that we happen to be using. And this is very powerful. The master allows us to create a style that can be applied to a particular page or pages. So those things that are common to the website, to the web design, would be in our master. And we would then create a new page based on that. So we have then this plan view. In here we can add additional pages. So right now by default I have a home page. But if I'm also going to be having a node, I'm going to have another page. I simply click on the little plus sign that's to the side. And I will then get a page inserted to the right of that page. You'll also notice that there's a plus sign at the bottom. This would be a child page. So these are all at the same level. A child page, let me just show you here. And I'm just going to call it test because I'm going to get rid of this in a little bit. But you can see it's beneath. It's not at the same level. So we can create and add new pages in a number of different ways. And if you want to delete it, just click on the little X that's in the upper right-hand corner of that. And that's what I'm going to do to get rid of that page. So I've got a two-page design going here. Right now I've not created any design, but I simply got my pages set up. 
Let me talk about the different views here first, and then we'll come back and we'll start adding some content. So in the design view, this is where we're actually modifying the page that we've selected. And if you look up here, you'll see a couple tabs. Website, this is going to take me back to my plan view where I see my individual pages and masters. So this looks at the overall website. Home, I happen to be on the home page. Remember in my website, in the plan view, I had a home and about. So I'd be working on the home page. And you notice these lines here. These are those columns. So we've got a certain width of um, gutter and column. We've got a total of 20 of them. So that's what that's at. And again, that's going to be primarily for layout purposes in this case. The preview, and we're not going to really see much here because I don't have anything in here in terms of design, but preview allows me to take whatever page I'm currently on and see what it's going to look like. And it's going to only show you a view within Adobe Muse. There are some other ways to look at actually in a browser, but this is also a very helpful way for at least initially looking at your page, and it works quite well. So we get our overall website, we design the individual pages, we make sure everything's looking good, and then we would go and publish. Notice that this one has a drop-down arrow, so we can publish this a number of different ways. We, if we have a host site, uh, GoDaddy, or you have some other personal site that you are going to publish this to, you would pick FTP host and put in your information. There's also through, I believe it's through Adobe, the Business Catalyst. And you could export this to your local machine or to another machine as a series of HTML files and corresponding files, and then move those over to your web server using a separate FTP program if you wanted to. So we got a number of different choices here for publishing. All right, so let's go back into our design. And we, we can do that a couple ways. I did click on design. I could have also simply clicked on the particular tab that I want to look at. Well, I actually want to work on my master. So I'm going to have to go back to either my plan view, or I know that this tab is going to take me there as well. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to click on my master. So I double clicked. And you'll now notice that there's a tab for a dash master. So this is the one that's going to influence all of my pages. So very simple in terms of Muse and the tools that are available. We don't have a whole lot and that's good because if we can uh, we'll have to cover a lot of different tools. But you'll see that there's the basic selection tool. We have a text tool and a rectangle tool. And then we have some viewing tools and some other things here. But for the most part you can be using the selection tool, text tool, the rectangle, and then using some things to control the view. So let's go ahead and put in a rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and click and hold and drag a rectangle in here. Now if you notice right where my cursor is, it's giving me the width and the height. And I can make this obviously any size that I want. If we want the rectangle to adapt, be fluid to the whatever width this is, then we would have to make sure that this is extended out to the full width of my page here. Now, where you have to be careful, again, looking at the width and height that's displayed to the right of the cursor, if I keep moving this, keep moving this, keep moving this, if I get near the edge, it's going to snap and give me width at 100%. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just make it a little bit short. Right now you say, well, it's not much of a rectangle. There's nothing there in terms of color. That's because with any of our tools that we're using, any of the things that we're creating, all the properties for that are going to be up here. And right now the fill is set to no fill. And that's what the line going through the square means. And we can access then different colors by simply picking the pull down. We also have some other options. Notice that the word fills actually a link, so we can get to some other things here as well. So we could do gradients versus solid. We can add other kinds of things. But for now, I just want to put a color in here. And let's just pick, for now, just that color. So I can demonstrate to you what I mean by the fluid uh, width in the 100%. So let me go ahead and let's preview what we've got. So right now I am previewing my master page and notice that when I change the width of this, that that rectangle that I drew is staying 
the same size. It is uh, being centered within my browser, or actually within this preview window, but it is staying the same size. If I take and I drag this so that it is at 100%, again, notice the 100% next to the width, and now I go to preview, there's already preview open. I could go here, I could go up to the other one, but I'm gonna click here. I need to refresh because I've made a change. You'll now notice that that rectangle, when I adjust the width of this preview window, that rectangle is adjusting, adapting, being fluid to the width as well. So depending upon what you want, you need to watch the width of that item. You'll see some guides here. Uh, these are determining that padding and those margins and where the footer and where the header are. Uh, and these, like I said, can always be changed, always be moved. So this is primarily your header area. This is going to be where the body of your material is going to go. And then we've got a footer. So let's go ahead and let's create another rectangle here. So I'm going to put one here in the footer. Again, I'm looking for that 100% uh, right now set to no fill. I'm going to go ahead and just make this a black footer. Again, let's take a look at our preview. We'll notice that right now it's not showing. We've got to remember that if we're clicking on this tab, it's showing us before it's been refreshed, so you need to make sure that you update. And if we've done it correctly, we'll see that that black bar changes, expands, always fills that width as we change the width of our preview window. Okay, let's go ahead and also look at some other elements here. I changed to my selection tool and I picked on this empty area. You may want this to be colored and we could certainly drag and put a rectangle in here. We can also set the browser fill color using this box. So if I wanted this to be Let's say that color. Simply use your browser fill, pick your color chip or color that you want to use. So that will then allow, if I can refresh, that no matter what width this is, that that area in between is going to be filled with that color. If you want it to be white, we can make it white. All right, so now if we go back to my website view, the plan view, you'll now notice that my master looks like what I've been working on, but notice that that has been applied to all of my pages because I want those common elements that are in my master to be applied to all those. So I now have it. So, well, how come I've got this space down here? This is a standard size um, rectangle and it's showing me these elements within that rectangle. So if my browser were opened up that big, that's how big it would be. Now, this can be adjusted. This can be moved down, as we'll see in a little bit here. So let me go back and let's make some changes to my home page here. I'm going to go ahead and expand my page to fill this space. So I'm going to do a Command-0. Let's put some text in here. So text, we've got to create a text box. And we can go ahead and type whatever we want. Uh, let's call this one my site. Remember that with any of these tools, the properties associated with them are going to appear up above. So I could change the font associated with this. I can change the font size associated with this. So we can do all kinds of changes that we would like to make to this text. We can make it all caps. Also, there are some different panels available. And there is a text panel. And depending upon how yours is configured, they may not always be in this order. But here's a text panel. I can pull this out separately. I can take a look and make my changes here as well. So I can change the color, I can make them all uppercase, justification, all those kinds of things. So let's go ahead and let's just leave that text pretty much 
as it is. Again, if I want to move things, make sure you get your selection tool, move things around, adjust things as they need to be adjusted. Now, certain things, particularly in certain parts of your website, you may always want this in a certain location. And remember that with this fluid responsive design, that on different devices, things can start moving around. So we can do what is called pinning. We can take a particular object, Again, I've selected it with my selection tool, properties associated with the appeared up here, but right here you'll see pin. So I could pin this to the upper left, or I could pin it just to the left. So it depends upon what we're trying to do as to what pinning uh, little dot we're going to click on. So again, let's go back to our preview. Let's make sure we refresh. And you're going to say, well, I'm not seeing the word uh, my site here. Remember what we're previewing is my master from before. And that's what this is reflecting, not the home. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's make sure home is picked. Let's go to preview. There it is. So if you're not seeing what you think you should be seeing, make sure you're on the right page. So there's my, my site. We could put a picture there. We could make this foot, this header area larger. We have all different kinds of options. I just want to show you the basics of creating this. Let's go back to the home. Let's say that I'm going to go ahead and put in some text in the main part here. So again, I could take and I could drag a rectangle in here. Notice again that I can make the width of this text rectangle 100% width. I could make it something that is a fixed size, or I can make something that is initially designed as a fixed size and it can adjust to different widths. Well, I'm going to keep mine at 100%. And we can go ahead and we could type some some text in there. I could put welcome. Thank you for visiting my site. Here you will find all kinds of things related to creating websites. So on and so forth. And again, we can format this. We have some properties up above here. Remember that we also have the panel here. So we can do different things. So maybe I want this to be more of a title. So maybe this needs to be a larger font. Maybe I also want, let's go even a little bit larger than that. Eh, that's pretty good. Maybe I want this slightly larger. We're going to go to 18. Right now we're up against the edge. So maybe we want a little bit of margin padding from the top and the sides. So down here we have some controls. So here's the left margin. Space before, space after, right margin. So let's put in some values. Let's try a 30 pixel left and right margin. Okay. Let's try space before. Let's try it again. Let's do 30. What I changed here was I had rather than the text rectangle picked, I only had selective parts. So I wasn't getting it applied to the entire thing. So I needed to change that. So I'm also going to make sure that my margin on the right is set. And I'm also going to make sure that the space before is set. And that's a little bit too much because I don't want it to be on the entire thing.
And then here, what I had to do to be selective, I didn't want every single line to have 30 pixel space, just that one. So I made sure I went back to my text tool, selected that, and added that in there. All right, let's go back and look at our preview. Remember to refresh. There it is. And what you'll see, and I don't have a whole lot of text in here, but as I get this down, you'll see that certain things are now moving out of position. It's wrapping around. And this is where that responsive design becomes a little bit more important. And we're, we won't get a lot in that, but you can see then that the text is adapting, moving based on the width of my preview window. All right, uh, let's say that, let me go ahead and go to my About page. So double clicked on it. Let me add some text in here for it as well. Let me make this one called About. Let's change the font of that one. I don't recall exactly what my other one was. Let's go to text. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. And the only reason I'm putting in the values in there is just to do a little bit differently. And so that I can see that I'm on the About page. So if we preview this page, we see that we've got the word About. So let's create some basic menu in here. So let's go to our master, because the menu is going to be common to all of those elements. So in the different panels, you should see one called Widgets Library. If you don't see the right panel, just go to your window and get the one that you need. So you'll see Widgets Library there. Mine's already showing up over here. In the Widgets Library, we have a folder called Menus. And we can do a horizontal or a vertical. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this in. And what it does, by default, is take and create buttons corresponding to my top level menus. So since I have two top level uh, web pages, it created a home and about. Does that automatically. Now, this is a series of elements one within the other. So to get to certain things, you may have to click more than one time. So if I click off, I click on, I've got a hold of the whole menu so that if I wanted to, I could then resize this entire thing. You'll also notice up here in the upper right hand corner, this little circle with the <coughs> excuse me, arrow in it, these are my options. So I could change the menu type from just the top level menus to all my pages. Remembering that I could have child pages, ones that are at a different level. Manual, where I specify what the buttons are and what they're going to be linked to. And we have some other options here as well. For now, we're going to leave ours at top level. But if you need to access the options, it's through this little uh, circle button up here. So I can position this wherever I want. Remember, too, that I can pin these wherever I want. And I also can change the font. I can change the color of the different operations of this button. So again, if you want to access something in this menu, you may have to click more than one time. Right now I have the entire menu um, selected and I get options associated with that entire menu. So if I wanted to change the font of this, I've clicked. I've clicked, and let's see if we get in there the right way here. There we go. I got into the point where I was able to change this. Let me now get in and let's say Arial. Made that change. It changed the font of my other buttons as well. I 
and notice that it's now a sans serif font. If I were to go back and add another page, go back to my master, notice that it automatically picked that up and added that. So creating menus is very, very easy in Adobe Muse. I'm going to go ahead and delete this page. Remember, click on the little X in the upper corner. I'm going to go back to my master. I can also, maybe I don't like these colors. Maybe I want to make the buttons simply appear like text buttons rather than a rectangle. So I could change the color of the different functions. So I've clicked on it. I clicked on it again and pay attention to what's happening up here. Again, I'm going to start clicking off. I'm going to click on the menu for the first time. Notice that this simply says menu and it no states is um, grayed out. If I click on it again, I now get menu item normal. Buttons have a series of different states. So if I click on the little word normal here, it's actually a link. I get normal, rollover, mouse down, active. This is what the button is going to look like normally when you're not, your mouse isn't over it, clicking on it or anything like that. This is the color that it's going to look like when the mouse is over top but not clicking. Obviously, this is the color when the mouse is down. You've pressed the mouse button. And then this is when it's actually active when you are on that particular page. So you can change these things. So let's say I want to change the normal. So I simply make sure that normal is picked. Right now, there's the fill color for that. So I could, if you remember, pick this, which would be no fill. So now that menu is simply going to be the text. Now, the other uh, states are going to color in that rectangle, but the initial state is simply going to be the word. So let's take a look and see what that looks like in my preview. So let me go ahead and I can use this particular preview because that menu is going to be common to everything. So let me refresh. So I am on the about page. So remember that my active color is this color. Here's my mouse over. I'm not clicking on anything. I simply move my mouse over. That's my mouse over color. Let me click on it. So you'll see that it actually functions. It's not just preview the window. It's actually a functional preview. So now I'm on my home page. So there's my active color. Right now, the color that's around the word about is my normal state. There's my mouse over. There's my mouse down color. So very easy to customize those menus. Let's also add in here another menu. So again, go to your widgets library. Go to, I'm going to do another horizontal, and I'm going to drag it down here in the footer. But rather than be a top level menu, I'm going to make it a manual menu. So this will be one that I am controlling that is not based on the pages that are in my websites, based on what I want there. These could be pictures, you could put icons, and we've all seen them on websites where you see a Facebook. Uh, link at the bottom or YouTube or Twitter or whatever it may be. That's what we're talking about here. Or this could be links to your internal pages as well, other special sites, anything that you would want. And we can resize this. We can come in. Now remember that to get to what you want, you may have to click multiple times. So right now, if we're looking at our properties, they're all associated with the button and not the text. So I can get in here I simply got in there to the point where I got my uh, font choices, my text choices, so that I can come in here and maybe I'm going to call this one Facebook. Oh, we don't need to return. If I needed other menu items here, we've got our pluses that we can go ahead and add to the right to left or the bottom. So now I've got another one. Oh, and another one. I didn't really want to do that. Let me click off. We'll keep all three. Obviously, I need to change the text on there. So I'm going to get to this one that's Facebook 2. There it is. 
let's call this one YouTube. Let me get over to this one. Let's call this one Twitter. Maybe again, I want to change the property associated with all of these. So there is, let me grab the right one. There is the two T's, two capital T's with my menu selected. I was able to change all those then to all uppercase. Or maybe I want, in order to match this a little bit better, maybe I want this to be the Arial font. So I was able to change those. Maybe, again, I want to change my states, my colors. So again, click until you get this menu item normal. And if I want this normal color not to have any fill, I could simply change it like that. Let me go ahead and make sure I'm saving this. I'm going to go ahead and do save site. Demo. I'm going to make sure this goes into my folder. And let's go ahead and go to my preview. Don't forget to refresh. There are my links. Right now, those don't take me any place. I did not add any link or URL to those. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, those are located on my master. So I've clicked and then I clicked again and I got to just the Facebook one. Up here now you're going to see that there's a hyperlink property. And we have add or filter links. So right now, I can type in that link. I could do www.facebook.com. That one is now linked to facebook.com. Let's get to this one. Click on it. I'm going to type in www.youtube.com. This one. www.twitter.com Let's test it out. Preview. R refresh. Let's do YouTube. There it is. So we can add these top level automatic menus. We can add manual types. Let's go ahead and add in an image. So I'm going to go to my home page. And we could do this a couple different ways. I could go ahead and just add in an image. So remember that in this demo folder, I have this picture. And I can take and drag that picture onto my site. And when I do, it gives me this the icon from my mouse. Mouse cursor changes to the little picture, and I can place that wherever I want. Now, this is a very large picture. One nice thing about Adobe Muse, the pictures that you bring in can be larger than what you need. And when it goes to publish your website, it is going to do the appropriate downsampling of the image. So there's no need to modify the size image. You can work off of the originals if you wish. Now also notice that when this was bigger, notice how that, that footer will move out of the way. So as you need more space, if you do it properly, those things will move out of the way for you, giving you that more space. So we've gone, gone ahead and, and we've got that picture. We can also do edit image properties. If you remember in basic HTML, we had the alt text and title text. Well, your tooltip is your title text. So in fact, if you hover over there, also known as the title attributes in HTML. 
So we could go ahead and put in there our title text. Uh, we'll put um, technology or something like that. Alternative text is for screen readers, people who have vision impairments. So I'm going to put in something a little bit more descriptive. Photo of man working on an iPad. So we have that in there. Also, if we have items that are in our project, if we go to our assets panel, it'll show you all the items that are in there. Now, this is externally linked. This is not a part of the Muse file. So when I come up and I do file and I do save site, this is not saved in the Adobe Muse file. It is linked to the file. So it's real important to keep all of your images and all of your pictures. If and ideally in the same location so that you can keep all those items together and very quickly find things as you need to, replace things, whatever it may be. However, you can locate those things. If you right click, you can relink if the link up broken, you can reveal, you can bring them together. That's the collect assets so you can get them all in the same location, but ideally do it right to begin with. Now, I mentioned that there are multiple ways of getting pictures in here. We could have also, let me go ahead and let me just move this down a little bit. I got it in that box here. Hold on. I didn't want to delete that. Sorry. There we go. So I could have, let's get this text box. Let me just move it for now up out of the way. I could have created another rectangle. I'm going to go to 100 width. And right now my fill is set to no fill. If I click on the word fill, one of the things I get is add image. And I can then locate the image that I want. I'm going to take the same image. And now that image is placed within that rectangle. And we have different options that we can have for how that fits in that area. So we could scale to fill. We can position that image in different ways. So maybe in the center of the image and the, look at the bottom of the image, whatever we want there. So if I were to make this rectangle a bit bigger, you know, we've seen websites like this where our image and maybe we've got some text on top of it, button, that's how we can do that in Adobe Muse. Let's take a look at our preview. So this is our home page. I'm simply going to do a preview. Remember, if we've done it correctly, that that image is going to adapt for us. And notice that as I change the width of this, that picture is changing as well. All right. Let's see if I've missed anything here. So you can see Adobe Muse is quite powerful as to creating a website. Okay. All right, so let's say we've got done with our website. We went through planning, designing, previewing, everything looks good. You might want to also look at this in your web browser before actually publishing this. And when you can do that, if you go up to File, and then you'll see preview page in browser or preview site in browser. And again, depending upon what you want to do, you'll choose one or the other. So I'm going to do site. So this is going to actually open up my project using my default browser, which is Firefox. And I can go ahead and take a look. And so I can test my different parts of my page, make sure things are working correctly. But remember, this is local. This is just a test of it. This is not published your site to some remote server.
to do that, you need to come up to Publish and pick your FTP host. And here you would need to know this information. You would have your server address, your username and password, and then go through the necessary following steps. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to uh, put my particular information in there. You're going to need to know that from your hosting site. And then you go through and it's going to actually convert what you've created in Adobe Muse to the appropriate HTML. Uh, using an FTP automatically put that up to your server. You will have to give it the URL so you're going to need to know what the URL is of your site and then it will actually open it up and you'll be viewing it then on your new uh, web server. You could also do export as HTML and so let's just leave that as um, I don't know if that'll work. We're going to give that a try. Again, I don't want to use my particular one. There we go. So this is local. Notice file users, that kind of stuff. So this is only on my computer. And let me just see if it put it on the desktop here. I'm not sure where I put it. Um, I'd have to look and see, but someplace on my local computer are the files associated. Actually, you can tell right here. Muse export. It's in my documents is where that would be. And this is just local. I could take and go into my documents folder, take the files that are in this Muse export folder and then actually take in manually transfer those using an FTP program. All right, so I hope that was hopeful and hopeful, helpful in showing you how to use Adobe Muse to create a basic website. Thank you.